What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Shop Talk Tuesday. So in this episode, we are making a chef's knife. Now, this was definitely a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be, and it pushed my, my limits within my forging, because with a chef's knife, you have to really thin it out, you gotta do a distal taper, all that stuff, and I'm gonna be forging all of that in. Now, what I am gonna do is in the end of this video, in the outro, I'm gonna give you all my takeaways and talk about the blade and actually do the talking part of the Shop Talk Tuesday. But for now, go ahead, sit back, relax, watch the video, and if you wanna stay tuned to the actual talking portion of this, just wait until the knife is done and we'll talk about it a little bit. Enjoy the video.
So here is the actual knife as we forged it out. I'm going to have to trim off a lot of this. This is a, this is way too big of a chef's knife. I mean, we're looking at almost 16 inches here, which is just ridiculous. I mean, look at that in my hand. That is massive. So we're going to trim it down a little bit. I want the blade to be just over seven inches in length. So the cutting edge is going to be with, with the curve in it and everything about seven and a quarter. It's seven inches from here to here. So about seven inches from there to there. Overall is about seven and a quarter. And then the overall length is going to be right at about twelve and a quarter inches.
All right, well, we were able to, to knock this particular build out, and it's absolutely one of my favorite ones that I've done. And I'm just super excited about this particular build. Now, there was a lot of things to learn about this, and this is the part of the video where the talking part of Shop Talk Tuesday kicks in. So if you're more interested in just watching the knife build, then you don't really have to listen to this part, but for the people who want to hear me actually talk about some of the takeaways that I had from this particular build, this is the time to listen to that stuff. Now, the reason why I do this in the outro now instead of during the video is there's a lot of people who just want to watch me make a knife and not listen to me talk, so that's why I have that section dedicated to that. This section dedicated to the talking. Now, some of the things to think through with this particular build. I'm going to have to get my amount of material management, if that's even a thing, uh, down a little bit more because I did waste a little bit of steel on this particular build because I didn't realize exactly how big of a knife I was planning on making and I just kind of winged it on the amount of steel that I was going to use and if y'all remember I had to cut off about that much excess and then a little bit off the spine area. The handle barely had anything removed from it but the overall blade profile was a little wonky because I'm still trying to get used to the forge to finish where I'm forging the bevels to almost 100% done and on this one it was a little bit different because I knew I was going to have to sand this area right here just because you can forge the bevels down a lot if it's on like a camp knife or a chopper or something like that and you're going to put a pretty aggressive edge on it you're going to end up grinding through the decarb and all that stuff but for this I didn't want the edge so thin that whenever I did the heat treat process, I was left with a non-hardened area because, you know, we might have lost too much carbon in that particular area with all the decarb and everything like that. So I left it just a hair thick knowing that I was going to end up sanding just this section right here. The whole entire spine area, all of this is still left how it was. I didn't sand any of this area. It's just the area down here. And some of that's for, you know, food and things like that. Not having a bunch of crevices right there. Plus, I needed to thin it out after the whole heat treat process. So, we have that. But, one of the things that I wish that I would have been able to put in the actual video was the point where I took the curve out of the blade and made it a little bit straighter. It does still have a belly to it, but there is a section in the video where it goes from forging to sanding and the blade straightens out a little bit by magic. But what really happened was I had a section that I had filmed, but the footage got corrupted and I couldn't upload it into this video. What I did was I brought the tip down a little bit because it had way too much arc in the belly. All I did to do that was I started forging all the way back here and I thinned this blade out quite a bit. I already had a distal taper. Now it's got a really thin distal taper all the way to the tip. I mean, that is one heck of a taper right there. And what I did was I just gradually forged the spine down into the bevels. I didn't just pinch the spine. I forged the spine and then I forged into the center of the bevels because this was already thin and I thinned out this area down to the edge. So I forged from spine down, just as if you would forge from the edge up and create your bevels. I did the reverse of that and I tapered it even more and I was able to bring this down. Now, if I would have started forging in this part right here, what would have happened is I'd have started forging here, forged this down and it would have put an S in the blade because it would have just dropped the tip down. So I had to start forging here so that it gradually brought the tip down to put us right there. I didn't grind all of that in. That was all forging, thinning it out, and handling it like that. Really happy that that turned out how I wanted it to. I was kind of winging it on that. I, in my mind, thought that's the way that it would work. It did work, so it just worked out. So that was one of the areas that I did something off the camera. The rest of the stuff, y'all got to see all the forging and all that. But I'm really excited about this build because it's pushing my limit even further than the other builds. We've got a really clean little arc on this plunge line going up into here. 
it fits exactly where I want it to be. We were able to forge this little area really down exactly how I wanted it to be right there. I think that turned out awesome. I really love the blade profile. I did something a little bit different on the handle and I thinned it out way more than I would typically thin it out. You see how thin this is, but you feel it and it just is so comfortable in the hand. We got our copper pins, jade scales, super clean, super thin area right here. Again, that's all forged right there, all the way down to that. <laughs> So again, this was one of those things where trying to make sure that I was able to forge in that long distal taper and then make everything sure that it was straight. There wasn't a wave in it. It didn't bend in one section or the other. I feel like that just was a huge success. The other knives that I've done are nowhere near as long as this one. And I think this one turned out awesome. But I want to know what y'all think. Do y'all like that? Do y'all like that particular finish? especially versus the other ones where it's all forged finish and not any sanding. Y'all think this one turned out? I, I think it did, and it is freaking crazy sharp. I mean, y'all saw me cut the, the receipt, which is very thin, and I mean, it cuts it like butter. I am absolutely just so happy with this build. And it's going to be mine. I'm probably going to go ahead and keep this. I, I haven't decided whether I'm going to sell any of the Forge Series knives. I know that one of them is going to be part of the giveaway, but we'll see which one. See how that goes. Guys, there it is. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that one. <sighs> That's the end of this video. If you're still here and for some reason you're not subscribed, you should subscribe to the channel. You should definitely give the video a thumbs up. That's the end of this one. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for just being part of this series. I'm going to give you all a bonus video this week of me making this ridiculous thing right here. That is menacing. This was part of a Halloween costume that I did, and it is 100% real and 100% dangerous and probably very illegal in some states. I don't think it's illegal in Texas. I don't know. I'm just not going to go anywhere. It's going to say my shop and end up in my office. But yeah, you've seen Lucille. This is Luis because it's a Louisville slugger. But y'all are going to see a video of me making that plus smashing a bunch of pumpkins and everything like that with it. So hopefully y'all enjoy that video when that comes out this week. Y'all have an amazing day. Stay safe. I'll catch y'all next time.